Oh man, perfect. Perfect harsh lighting. Super ideal. All right guys, got another custom e-bike build for you. Let's get right into it. Go over what makes this bike cool and what we did to it. If you're new to the channel, I'm Johnny Nerdout. I convert bikes into e-bikes. And I also do some other cool crap too. You should check out my other videos. This is kind of an interesting bike. This is a Cannondale Silk 400. This is not a rigid front fork. This is a suspension fork, but it's got the suspension right here. It's got like the mono shock. It's right here instead of two right there. This was something Cannondale was doing like in the early 2000s, I, I wanna say, late 1990s. They had a bunch of bikes like this. I can't remember the other ones. I think like the Jekyll also had something like that. And they also, some, they were messing around with it in the rear too, the same thing. Just a single shock that looked just like this right here. But it's interesting, it's, it's a smooth ride. And it's kind of incognito front suspension. The all black just makes it look like it's nice and smooth. But yeah, it's a Cannondale, so you know you're getting a good quality bike. Cannondale doesn't put out crap. This one does have rim brakes, and a lot of people always ask me, like, hey, my bike's got rim brakes, what do you think? I always just say, check out my other video on rim brakes, but I always just say, if they work good, then they're fine. If you live like in Portland or Seattle where it rains all the time, rim brakes probably aren't the best thing to do. But if you're just kind of like a fair weather rider, Rim brakes are fine as long as they work well. As long as they're up to date, put new uh, new pads on it, new brake line and a new brake cable for like 15, 20 bucks. And these things should work perfect and just get them adjusted. And so for this motor, we went with the BBS HD, 68 millimeters, a thousand watt nominal, about 1750 watts at peak. Got a 52 volt, 17 and a half amp hour battery. We went with a 36 tooth Lecky chain ring. Chain, those Leckies are nice because they got that fat, narrow tooth profile, so it really grabs onto this chain really good. And the 36 is gonna give you a lower gear ratio, so it's really gonna, in that low end, it's really gonna pay off. You're gonna do a lot better climbing, a lot better acceleration. And that's one of the main benefits of going mid-drive is that you're able to just dial in that gear ratio perfectly. If I had a hub motor back here, physically, that gear ratio is the same in that motor. Yes, you could change your gears that you're putting your human power to, but that's only like 300 watts. This motor is putting out 1700 watts. It's a far more efficient way to use your mid drive to drive these gears than your legs. It drives me nuts when people still tell me that hub drive is a better system. <laughs> like, in what universe? It makes zero sense. You don't have to be a mechanical engineer to understand that a mid drive is a far superior way to go. Anyways, I got a whole nother video on that. We got a gear shift sensor in it because it is a mid drive. Uh, just acts like an automatic clutch, just kills power, switches gears, goes right on. Brake cutoffs, new levers with the brake cutoffs built in, so when you hit the brakes, it cuts power to the motor. 500C color display, and a little throttle here. So when your legs get too tired from riding, you can just hit the throttle and just go. All right, let's go do a Johnny Nerdot test. So you can see, this is obviously a bike that's, you know, probably 20, 20 years old at least. It's probably hanging up in someone's garage because this thing is, it's not beat up or anything. So you can tell they bought it, didn't really use it much. But hey, it's still a good bike. Like why, why buy a two, three, four thousand dollar $4,000 e-bike that's probably going to have a hub motor in it and that's probably going to be made of inferior components. This is a Cannondale with high-end components. Granted, it does have rim brakes, which aren't ideal, but these ones work really good. They grab well. So I have no problems at all converting a bike with these disc, well, with these rim brakes. And yeah, this guy's got a killer bike. This bike probably cost about 1,700 bucks, including labor for me to do it. For 1,700 bucks, he's got a bike that is gonna blow a $3,500 pre-made e-bike out of the water in range, performance, speed, climbing ability. And this bike fits them well, because they bought it fitted to them, lest I digress. Later guys.